Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the Horizons Edge channel and Profiles from the Titanic, the series where we're taking a look at individuals from the Titanic and find out who they were and what they were doing and perhaps why they died on board the Titanic. And that's why we're still interested in them even a hundred years after the sinking or more than a hundred years now. And so uh, they're fascinating people. Today we're going to go back to the category of officers and crew. Most of the time you hear about some of the officers like Captain Smith who we've already profiled. He was the first profile that we had. Or Charles Lightoller, you know, the highest ranking uh, officer who survived. But today we're going to take a look in the profile, somebody who kind of doesn't really get mentioned too much, to tell the honest truth. We don't hear too much about him, and that's because he simply was doing his duty, and there isn't too much controversy, for the most part, about him. And uh, we're taking a look at, basically, Captain Smith's second-hand man, the second-in-command of the Titanic. Today in the profile, Chief Officer Henry Wilde. And we hope you enjoy the video. Please hit the uh, like and subscribe button and get the word out. Uh, if you search, just you type in profiles from the Titanic and you'll get all the videos that I've been making here. And I hope to keep on making them and I hope you all enjoy them too. So please help me spread the word about that. And uh, again, today in the profile, Chief Officer Henry Wilde. Henry Tingle Wilde was born in 1872 in Liverpool, England and by his teenage years was already going out to sea. He served as an apprentice on several ships over the years and worked his way up to his master's certificate working as second mate before joining the White Star Line in 1897 at the age of 25. He began as a junior officer serving aboard White Star ships such as the Arabic, the Celtic, the Medic, and the Simric between the years 1905 to 1908. Ultimately, he became the chief officer of the RMS Olympic in 1911 and served aboard her under Captain Edward John Smith. Wilde was also no stranger to tragedy. Just a year before, in December of 1910, his wife and infant twin sons died, perhaps from scarlet fever. He did have four surviving children, though. But by April of 1912, Wilde, who thought he was going to stay aboard the Olympic, to help out her new captain after Captain Smith was transferred to the Titanic, was told to stay in Southampton, and Olympic sailed on April 3rd without him. The orders came through soon enough, and on April 10th, Wilde came aboard the Titanic as her chief officer, once again serving under Captain Smith for the Titanic's maiden voyage. Chief Wilde had been on duty on Sunday, April 14th, from 2 to 6 p.m. that afternoon, and after 2nd Officer Lightoller relieved him at 6 o'clock, not much is known what Wilde did until the collision with the iceberg that night at 11.40 p.m. But after the ship struck the ice, he joined Captain Smith and Thomas Andrews on an inspection of the ship to check for damage. After this, Wilde was put in charge of preparing the lifeboats on the port side of the Titanic. By 1.30 a.m., Wilde asked Lightoller where the weapons were kept, he distributed Webley revolvers to the officers, telling Lightoller that he may need it. Chief Wilde then went to the starboard side to help First Officer Murdoch with collapsible boat C. It was this boat that Bruce Ismay jumped into as Wilde gave the order to lower it away. After returning to the port side, seeing Lightoller brandish his weapon at the crowd, Wilde helped with the collapsibles on the roof of the officers' quarters as the bow slipped under the waves. Chief Officer Henry Wilde died in the sinking. His body was never found. On his gravestone in Liverpool, the inscription reads, One of Britain's Heroes. We hope you enjoyed the profile. Please hit the subscribe and like buttons, and thanks for watching.